Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rhiannon and today we're going to be going over my witchy and fictional TBR list for the summer. I know it's the end of July almost here, but you know what, I think we still have a little bit of summer left. Uh, there's a good chunk in the season that we can get some really good reads on. And I feel like fiction and witchcraft is like a year-round thing anyways. So let's get into this video. If you guys enjoy my videos, make sure you hit subscribe and the like button at some point throughout this video so that uh, YouTube knows that you enjoy my videos. And make sure you turn the no notification bell on. Um, make sure you turn it on to all notifications so you know whenever I post a video on YouTube and that way you don't miss out. All right, so the first book that I'm going to be reading this summer is a witchcraft book. And it is called Beza Mustang and Sword by Chris Orpelio and uh, Tara Love McGuire. This book, I skimmed through it already. So far, I'm kind of obsessed. This book definitely holds up to the name. Uh, I'll just read the synopsis so you guys get an idea of what it is. Step onto the crooked path. Orpelio and McGuire have done it. Beza Mustang and Sword is as comprehensive a guide to traditional witchcraft as one could ask for. It may take a few days to read, but will keep you engaged for a lifetime. Amy Blackthorne, author of Blackthorne's Botanical Magic and creator of Blackthorn Hoodoo Blends. And then it further says, traditional witchcraft is not about where you're from, but where you are. Regional traditional witchcraft teaches people to find their craft in their own backyards, in the uncultivated land, the wild unknown, and in their ancestors, rather than in ancient foreign deities or neo-pagan style of religious form of witchcraft. So that's this book. This book, if you have not gotten it yet, it's definitely a must read. I've not finished it, I've just kind of skimmed through, but as far as I read through, it holds up to the testimonies of other people who are making review uh, reviews on these books. This book is a must have. It is phenomenal, especially if you're looking to do more of a traditional witchcraft um, style as opposed to following a more modern style of witchcraft. So, as I'm staying in sword is a must read. Now I must say I did fangirl a little bit. Uh, I posted a picture earlier this week um, with the first three witchcraft books. The Year of the Witch, Besom, Stang, and Sword, and this one. And Keldon commented on my picture, saying that he hopes that I enjoy this book and actually gave me a book suggestion. So I am super excited for that one. That's going on straight onto the top of my next TBR list video. But this book is one, come on, just stunning. And I actually have watched Keldon on YouTube since the very beginning as he started posting on YouTube. So I'm super excited for this one. Learn to walk the path of traditional witchcraft. Part the thorny bramble and take a walk along the witchling mysterious crooked path. Within these pages discover a wealth of hands on tips and techniques to begin your journey into the realm of traditional witchcraft. Learn to weave a powerful personal practice that is informed by folklore and grounded in your own location and natural landscape. Along the way, you will find valuable information regarding the tools, rituals, and spells of this fascinating tradition. Together with lessons on connecting with deities, familiar spirits, ancestors, and the spirits of place, the supportive advice and encouragement, Kelvin provides everything you need to successfully navigate your own path helping you master even more advanced practices such as hedge crossing as you perform your day-to-day -day experience into a life fulfilled with magic and spirit. Now, if that's not something that would hook you, I don't know what else would be. This book is, I'm predicting, going to be my favorite of the entire year that I've read so far. I cannot wait to dive into this one because it is, it's a traditional witchcraft, but it's also allowing you to mix in that folklore basis, which I'm super about. I keep dancing between traditional witchcraft, uh, folk practice, Celtic practice, and I can't really define myself, but I feel like if I gave myself a really good mix and customized my very own practice with all three of those things kind of combined, I think that'd be the practice for me. So I'm excited to read into this one. 
And the last of the witchcraft books is actually The Year of the Witch, and this is by Temperance Alden. This book has been all over the internet. I am sure you guys have seen it. I absolutely adore this book. As you can see, I'm already partway through. I picked this up just the other day when I ordered the other two books. And I sat down and I read about 60 pages in, and... I'm kind of enthralled with her as a person and her life, especially if you're looking to build a practice that's a little bit more customized and that's something I'm all about. I've done a video in the past on the Wheel of the Year myself um, and that will be actually going up pretty soon. But I've also done a video where I talked about how I didn't like the static Wheel of the Year and how everyone uses it exactly as how it is instead of customizing it to their traditions and their history and what makes sense to them. I just feel like it's a little bit um, cookie cutter um, unless of course you're in like say Wicca and they use the Wheel of the Year in their tradition that's totally fine but for me if you're like say a Celtic witch and you use a cookie cutter version of the Wheel of the Year it doesn't really make sense to me in a lot of ways, especially because a lot of the holidays were regionalized from other places in many different cultures throughout the world. So to go to a neo-pagan, more modern witchcraft practice doesn't make too much sense to me. I mean, you can do what you want, but for me, it didn't make much sense. I've been wanting this book for forever. It's been on my list for I don't even know how long now, since probably it came out. Temperance herself is just a fascinating person and if you don't know who they are this is definitely a book to dive into. Make sure you also check out the podcast that Temperance co-hosts with two other people. It is called Occultism with a Side of Salt and that's where I first discovered her um, because I did follow really closely to a Warrior Witch and then I discovered the rest of them, uh, the wonderful trio that they are and Temperance's book. So that podcast is a wealth of knowledge and so is this book. Even just reading into Temperance's back history, it feels like she almost has had nine lives in one. It's fascinating and I'm not even at the Sabbaths yet, so I'm very, very excited to dive into that part. Okay, so going into the fictional books, there's four more books on my list that I have here, and then I believe three more that I have yet to order. Um, but this first one is Stuart McLean, and it's called The Vinyl Cafe uh, Notebooks. If you've not heard this man read his stories on recording, they're absolutely charming and uh, heart-wrenching and funny and sweet and calming. It's the one thing that I do listen to when I need to calm down and so does my partner. Uh, he introduced me to the reader um, and just look at the cover of this book. It's absolutely beautiful without the the forward fold. I'm obsessed with this book so far. I really wanted to dive into the actual novel. Um, it's a collection of stories because my boyfriend owns this book and he introduced me to it and I'm obsessed with the storytelling and the style of writing and I can't wait to dive into this one. So just to read a few of the quotes on the back, McLean offers the same thing to readers his show offers to listeners, the chance to travel on their couch to meet the interesting in the everyday, an original joyful talent. So basically, if you've not heard of this, the writer writes about an everyday family and their family and friends, and the weird, crazy, heart-wrenching, um, frustrating, and everyday life occurrences that happens um, within their lives. And this is a must-read, and it's definitely like an autumn book as well. I feel like it's very family-oriented, and I think it would be perfect for that as well. The next book that I want to read is actually Dracula. Believe it or not, I've never read Dracula in my entire life. Like, ever. And I feel like that's a shame. <laughs> so, since I'm so lucky to have a partner who owns this book, I am going to dive into this one, and then right after I'm finished this one, I'm going to actually order Dracul, which is the prequel to 
Dracula. And if you've not heard of that, I believe the writer of Dracul is Bram Stoker's, I believe is Bram Stoker's like great grandnephew or something like that. I'm not very sure. And because of that, it's the only recognized prequel to Dracula. And uh, I was watching actually Darling Desi the other day and um, I was going through some spooky book suggestions that she suggests and she said that there's actually a author's note in the back of the book that states that when Brom brought the story officially to his publisher he first wanted to publish the book as an informant of novel to help people stay safe but because Jack the Ripper was going crazy back then and uh, people were super scared the publishing did not want to create mass panic and um, with great convincing were able to finally convince Brom to release the book as a fictional novel. It's actually said that Brom brought his book and set it on the publisher's table and said one sentence. This story is real. So if you want a book that actually like convinces you that vampires are real, this is the book for you. And that's what Desi said. And it just gave me chills and um, I couldn't get it out of my head. So I have to read Dra Dracula so that I can get to Dracul. And then I'm going to go down the never ending pipeline of wonderful vampire books from the Dracula collection. Another book that I want to get into, which is another vampire book, is uh, The Interview with the Vampire. I've seen the movie and I absolutely adored it, but I never read the novel. And I think that's a shame since I want to become more of a vicarious reader. I am definitely going to get into this book and go down the series that is stemming from this one as well. So then of course, naturally, after reading Interview with the Vampire, um, I'm definitely going to uh, jump into Vampire Lestat. I am actually really excited that my boyfriend owns this book and is allowing me to read this. I absolutely love the one movie that um, had him in it and I need to read this book. <laughs> I need more. I need to know more about everything. And of course, everyone knows these books. They they know the synopsis, and if you don't, definitely look it up. But these are staples, especially going into the autumn season, closer to autumn. Um, these are definitely good books to start reading into. The last books that I want to get into is actually from Practical Magic series. So if you ever watch the movie Practical Magic, which of course you would if you're on my channel, how could you not have watched that movie? Um, this is actually the book that inspired Practical Magic. And it is a little bit more almost like real everyday kind of um, feel to the book, I've been told. And I've been told that you get much deeper into the aunties and learning who they really are. So I'm really excited about that. It's a little bit less like fantasy magic and a little bit more practical, practical magic, which I always thought there wasn't enough magic in the movie to begin with. Um, but when it was in there, it was a little bit more fantastical. And of course it's a movie, so they want to make it a little bit more like exciting. But um, I'm excited to look into like the actual practical side of magic and following this family and kind of how they got to where they are and diving into the lives of the aunties, why they are in the house that they're in that's set in the movie and all of that because I've always wanted to know more. I always felt like that movie was so lacking because there was not enough to know about like the past and the aunties and the girl's mom. Of course you want to read Practical Magic. So I have Practical Magic the Anniversary Edition in my shopping cart so I definitely want to get that because I've never read the book. Then you want to read the prequel to the first book again. So Magic Lessons, the prequel to Practical Magic. In an unforgettable novel that traces the century-old curse to its source, beloved author Alice Hoffman unveils the story of Maria Owens accused of witchcraft in Salem the matriarch of a line of the amazing Owens women and men featured in Practical Magic and Rules of Magic. So basically it goes into like the history of the origins of the story and then 
Um, the original Practical Magic goes into like the aunties' history and where they're coming from and how they got to their house and the raising of the girl's mother. And then um, the next book is The Rules of Magic a novel and this one I'm told is actually going a little bit more into the girl's mother and all about her and her life. I'm not sure if that's true this is just through what I've been told online through people in book clubs so I'm not sure if that's entirely true but I'm excited to dive into those more. So those are all of my books that I'm going to be diving into this summer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you would like more videos about witchcraft or book reviews, uh, definitely let me know in the comments down below what books you want me to review or um, what book suggestions you would like to have. And I can definitely uh, get into those videos for you guys because I definitely enjoy this. We could even start a book club if you'd like. If you guys enjoy my videos, make sure you hit subscribe and the like button at some point throughout this video so that uh, YouTube knows that you enjoy my videos and make sure you turn the no notification bell on. Um, make sure you turn it on to all notifications so you know whenever I post a video on YouTube and that way you don't miss out. Also, you can check me out on Instagram where I post quite a bit about other things, including my videos. So before I post a video, it'll be up on Instagram, letting you guys know that it's live. So you'll get a reminder there as well. As well as I post really nice, cute aesthetic videos and photos all about witchcraft and my path and dark academia and all of that stuff. So if you're interested in that, definitely make sure you click in the description box below and the link to that will be down there below. And with that, I love you guys so very much. Have an amazing evening or whatever it is, wherever you are in the world right now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay wicked.